Good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is DJ Varium with another installment to my Game Changers videos, uh, the series called Game Changers. Uh, and this one is about gain staging. Um, and this is probably going to be quite a long video just because gain staging is a simple idea, but quite difficult to explain. And I don't just want to show you, well, here in FL Studio, what you do is you just put this plugin on there and make sure the level stays at minus 18 all the way through and that's what you do i think it's more important that you actually understand what gain is um and why it's important in the analog world and therefore why it's important when we're producing music um so there's a few parts to this so first of all i just want to kind of just do a little bit of an explanation as to what gain is because so many people um confuse gain and volume and they don't really understand what the difference is between gain and volume um and i come across so many people working in live because i do a lot of live performances as well djing and, and such and i was a um sound engineer for a for a female vocalist for a long time so i did a lot of live work um and the amount of people i came across or still come across in the live performing industry that don't understand the difference between gain and volume is frightening. Um, so let's just quickly explain what the difference is. So the, the signal, the signal that gets sent from somewhere to somewhere else is referred to as sig the, le the signal level. Um, so if we're working in with xlr cables standard microphone cables trs jacks those kind of cables um i've got one here um so here's one so a this has got an xlr on one end and a trs on the other end um tip ring sleeve so it's called a trs cable if it only had one band around here it would be a ts cable tip and sleeve anyway that's xlr the other end so that because and the reason why that's important is because rca cables which are if you work with vinyl or whatever and some some audio equipment is connected with um with rca cables and rca cables operate at a lower decibel level than xlrs do that's kind of by the by a little bit but um when we're working with audio there's a level of the signal that's being sent and the difference between gain and volume is that gain is the signal level and volume is then when we amplify that signal so if you understand that volume is when we amplify a signal because that's what we do we turn the slider so the slider in the mixer in fl studio that slider that we slide up and down on the channel that's volume that's not gain that's volume just like on a mixer it's volume that's when we turn up our speakers either on the knob on the back of them or on the amplifier that's going to them on our audio interface on them that's volume it doesn't change the level of the signal so we set the level of the signal and then we amplify it and that's why we have to make sure that the signal level or the gain is correct before we amplify it because when if we amplify a signal that's too hot that's when we damage everything in the chain all of the analog stuff the interfaces the amplifiers the mixing desks the speakers we damage all that if we amplify a signal that's too hot um, and you might go, well, I just make music on a laptop. It doesn't really matter to me. Well, if you want someone to play that music back on speakers, on a mixer with an audio interface, if you're mastering your signals too loud and they amplify it, it will damage their equipment. And that's why there's certain prescribed um, levels on streaming sites and whatever that music has to be kind of within those parameters and if they're not then their software will automatically compress it or reduce it so that it doesn't damage everyone's equipment headphones speakers whatever so that's why signal level is important so 
gain is about the level of the signal and to try and equate this to something that might make it kind of make more sense would be if we were to say well water pressure so in the uk water pressure is around one bar so that's the pressure that the water comes out of the tap and that's fixed i can't change the water pressure i mean it might change if everyone in the street turned their tap on but um the water pressure is fixed it's at one bar um a bit like the water in my heating system is at a constant pressure controlled by the boiler um that pressure doesn't change when i go upstairs to the bathroom and turn the tap on even though the pressure is the same how much water that i let out depends on how much i open the tap or not that is volume so the water pressure that's controlled by the water board that's gain they set the gain i can't change it um I control the volume, I control how much comes out of the tap. Uh, and if they set their pressure too high, they set their gain too high, their pressure too high, then when I open the tap, it might damage the tap. It might damage all the pipe work that is supplying my tap because it might not be able to cope with that much pressure and it might burst somewhere. So that's the best analogy I can come up with. That water pressure, the pressure of the, the pressure that the water's at in the pipework is your gain. And the volume is how much you let out of the tap. And if that gain isn't correct, then either I'll open the tap and everything will explode because my pipework can't cope with the pressure. Or I won't be able to get enough water. Or if the gain's too low, which is rare that, that happens, but if the gain's too low doesn't matter how much i open that tap i'm not going to get enough water coming out of it for what i need so that's the difference between gain and volume so i hope that makes sense now i'm going to look at that in the context of live performances and how it works with analog equipment and then we'll look at how that translates into fl studio and what producing no matter what software you use how it translates into digital domain and what we need to do to make sure we keep that gain consistent all the way through. Let's move on to that. Okay, so gain staging when it comes to live equipment. So this is my mixer for when I'm doing live DJing primarily. Um, although I've used the same mixer as this to work with a vocalist on a number of occasions. But it's very similar to what you see on the mixer section in FL Studio. Your inputs come in here. So these are all your inputs. And you, you might look at it and go, you know, a lot of people look at it and go, wow, that's confusing. You only need to know what each channel is. Yeah, just like on FL Studio, each one of these channels is exactly the same. Now, unlike in FL Studio, see, so input comes into here. And I've got a microphone, dynamic microphone not what you'd use in a studio, but what you would use live, plugged in to insert number one, channel number one here. That's plugged in there. And then you work your way down. So there's a limiter there, I can put a limiter on. Um, first one we've got is the gain. So that's gain. Then we've got EQ. So you'd be familiar with EQ. These are then auxiliary sends. So I can send this channel out to that auxiliary or that auxiliary or that auxiliary um, to then send, because these would, these would be where my speakers would be connected. So my speakers would go out, so that's my output. That's your master channel. That's my output going to the speakers. Um, so yeah, these are just EQs, auxiliary sends. That one is specifically for reverb. Then I've got my balance left and right, and then my channel volume. So the first thing you do, so when I get to a gig, a live gig, and I switch this on, everything's connected. So my, these two are pre-wired, so they go to my actual DJ controller or DEX. These two are for the two wireless microphones I've got plugged in here. If I need a wireless microphone, they're ready. I'll use a dynamic wired microphone for most of my MC and kind of stuff that I'm doing, so that'll be fixed next to me. So these are just all my inserts and I'll generally have a backup system, which might just be my phone plugged in here, constantly playing a mix, just in case I have any technical issues, 
I can just bring the fader up on that channel and there's music playing and nobody might even notice that I've done anything. So anyway, that's kind of irrelevant. The point of this is that the first thing I will do before I do anything else, so I've got all the, and I'm going to demonstrate it with the microphone. Before I bring the faders up, before I bring any of these faders up, and I'll deliberately put all of them down, because before I send any signal to the output, to my speakers, very expensive, very big speakers, before I send any signal to those speakers, I need to make sure my gain is correct. Because if my gain isn't correct, I'm going to damage my speakers. Now, they're active speakers, so they do have limiters built into them to protect themselves. But even so, if I send a, if I send a ridiculous signal to them, that limiter might struggle to deal with it. I might blow the speakers and it's going to sound like a dog's dinner. So the first thing you do with any live performance before you send any signal to your speakers, and if you're using passive speakers, then it's even more important. Before I do that, I have to set the gain. So if we look here, this is my VU meter, so to speak. This is my level meter. So minus 24, zero, plus 16. So this is my VU. So there's a button here called PFL, which is called pre-fade listen. Pre-fade listen. And so I put that in for whatever channel I want to check the gain on. I want to check what the level is. So let's do the microphone. So I'll put that button in. And now this meter will show me the level, the signal level, for the microphone. So I'm going to put the microphone to my mouth. One, two, one, two. So you can hopefully see them going up. Now I will then do that and I'll adjust the gain until I get it to about zero dB. Certainly not over. One, one, two, two, two. So this is going over. Two, 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 two. Right, that's peaking at zero. So I'll set my gain. Now I'll take the prefade off. And I'll put the prefade on this channel and I'll set the gain so that my music and I'll be playing a track that's at a really loud point, the loudest track I've got at the loudest point, set the gain on that channel. And you set the gain for everything that's going to be coming through here for each channel. Once you're happy with the gain, you can then bring your master up and then bring your individual channels up as you need. Because if you don't, you're going to end up with signal way over zero decibels getting sent to the speaker, damaging the speaker, and also sounding terrible. And when it's your own equipment and your own money, you don't want to be doing that at all. Um, also, you know, individual limiters within this will kick in if you go over. So with live sound, if you go over zero decibels, you've got massive problems. And if you're if you're in a band and you've got 10 different instruments coming into this you can't be having it going over zero decibel or it's just gonna fall to pieces so i thought it was important to show you how it works because once you once you get that theory in your head it makes a lot more sense in fl studio because we might be working in a digital domain in fl studio but it still has to translate into the analog world where a DJ might play that track. Um, so that's why gain is important. Okay, um, so as we've discussed, the gain on analog equipment um, is slightly different to how we perceive it within a digital environment. So let's kind of look at how that translates into what we're doing here. Um, and there's two there's two reasons why we need to well two main reasons why we need to pay attention to gain structure and gain staging within a digital environment. And number one is that ultimately we're going to be playing back this music on analog equipment. And analog equipment requires um, the audio to be gained in a certain way so that it doesn't damage the audio or so that the audio doesn't distort. And secondly, most of the plugins that we're going to be using, whether it's compression or reverb or saturation, um, even EQ to a degree, they're all modeled on 
hardware equipment. So, you know, you might have a plugin that's an emulation of a certain compressor, maybe a FG2A compressor, and it's modeled on that. Now, when they make the plugin, they will model the behavior of the actual piece of equipment and go, right, how does it react at this level, at this level, at this level, at this level? And analog equipment does not work very well at all if it doesn't have the right signal level coming into it. So if you're sending a signal that's way too hot or way too cold um, and running that through a compressor plug-in and an EQ plug-in and a saturation plug-in, and then going, well, I'll just adjust the gain at the end by moving the slider down to there so that it comes out at the right level at the end, and that that's fine. Well, all of those plugins are not really going to be working properly because the hardware that they're modeled on wouldn't work. It you know, it might not even do it might not even be doing anything. Um because you're sending it a signal that it can't even detect. Um so that's the other reason why we need to do it. So if you're struggling to kind of get to grips with compression or whatever, you might be sending signals to your compressors that are so low in in gain that the compressor's not really even reacting to them. And I've got some plugins like that. Um, Sound Toys Decapi um, Decapitator, is it? Yeah, the saturation one, which is one that I use quite a lot. If you don't send the right signal to that, it just doesn't work properly. Um, it might alter the sound and it potentially could give you the sound that you're after, but it's not going to work properly if you're not sending it the right signal. Um, so that's a, another good reason. And the problem is when you're new to producing and you don't really understand compression fully anyway, and then you're trying to compress, but you're sending it a signal that's not the right level, and then you can't get the compressor to work, you don't realize that one of the reasons you're not getting the compression that you want is because you're not sending it the right signal in the first place. So um, I've got most stuff turned off here. So um, I mean, I've got everything turned off. So let's just turn the drum bus back on um, and just just to kind of give you a feel for what's going on here. Uh, well, have I got no sound coming out of that? Oh, because we've got no drums at that point. There we go. That'd be why. So I've only got the I've only got the drums coming through at the minute. So that's the kind of general feel of of that there. So I've got that looped. Um, so if we just look at the kick now, um, this is the way that I used to used to do my gain staging, and it's probably the easiest way for most people to do it in the first instance. So as you can see, I've got a limiter on there first. I'm not doing any limiting. I'm just using it for gain. Then I've got a VU meter. Then I've got Neutron to do EQing and compression and whatever. Um, and then at the end of the chain, I've got a VU meter again and a limiter again. And I'll explain to you why. So the, what I would do is I would go, right, okay, let's open up that limiter and let's open up the VU meter. If I come across to this screen, then here they are. So with a VU meter, and this is a free, this is a free plugin from Clanghelm. Uh, this is a paid version of it, but there's, you can get a free version of this, which just doesn't give you this control at the bottom, which gotta be honest, I don't ever use anyway. Um, so this is free. This is obviously a stock plugin. So you don't need to purchase anything as such to be able to do gain staging. So if I just play, I'm going to turn the drum bus off so you won't actually hear the drums, but you'll still see what's happening. Now, VU meters, generally speaking, on any plugin are going to be calibrated so that zero is actually minus 18 decibels, dBFS. Um, so zero isn't the zero that we see on here. It's not the same thing. And quite frankly, the numbers on here are irrelevant. They don't mean anything. Um, so best to not really pay too much attention to this other than a guide because that's not really the level because these because this is digital these these aren't reacting like 
a VU meter reacts or like our ears react to sound because our ears take time to react to sound. It's fractions of a millisecond, but it's not instantaneous. They adjust as soon as they hear the sound to then capture the sound. And so that's how a VU meter reacts in the same way. But the point of this is that a VU meter and the way we need to gain stage really is using a VU meter, not using this. And I know that there is a decibel meter plugin within FL Studio. Don't use that because it's doing the same as these. And it's quite frankly irrelevant. There, sh there shouldn't even be these meters in here. It'd be better if they weren't there. Um, so don't try and use these for gain staging. Um, so yeah, all you re really need to know is that zero is minus 18. With this particular plugin, you can actually change that in the calibration there. You can change that to whatever you want, but you're best off leaving it as it is. Uh, now let's assume that the kick sample that I was using, I've already kind of um, adjusted, adjusted this one. The kick sample coming in was coming in too hot. Let's imagine because it's pretty much smack on. Um, but you, there's there's a couple of ways you could open up the actual sample and adjust the clip gain, as it's called, to turn it down. As you can see, it's turned it down. Uh, if I just put that back to eighty, um, or maybe you're using something where you can't adjust the gain like that, or um, for whatever reason, I tend to actually use the gain within the limiter to either increase it or decrease it until it's at zero. Um, so that's pretty much at zero, isn't it? Uh, it's clipping at about one decibel over there. Yeah, one decibel over it's kind of peaking at. So let's just move that down one decibel. Uh, and then the peak should be at around zero. 0 0.1 it's near enough it's definitely near enough so there i go it's peaking at 0 0.1 so i'd be happy with that so i now know that my signal coming in coming into the kick coming in here because just to kind of let let's just refresh on what the signal path actually is that sample comes into here and it comes in here goes through these plugins and then it goes to the slider that adjusts the volume that then goes out to the master. So that's the order that it does things. And just like I said, with the when we were looking at the analog mixer, you've got to really think that this is volume, it's not gain. Whilst it kind of has the same effect in this instance of affecting the gain to the master, you've got to think about it that these are volume, they're not gain. Uh, and this track has been mixed down, and you'll notice that all of these are at zero. Now, whilst I'm composing and coming up with ideas, I will move these up and down just because it's quick and I'm in a creative headspace, and I don't want to be messing around trying to do gain staging at that point particularly. I'll do a little bit of it. Uh, when, I'm, when I kind of add a new sample, I will kind of very quickly just get it to zero roughly but I'll do most of my gain staging towards the end when I'm starting to add effects and stuff because um, that's when it starts to matter um, but all of these are at zero because I then adjust my gain to suit um, as I'm going to show you now so we've got the gain coming in so I now know that my next plugin that I put in there which is Neutron let's open that up um, and this isn't this isn't I was messing around with this before when I tried to record this video earlier. So I don't know you. So I've only got an equalizer on here at the minute. Um, so let's say that I was doing something like that and I added that to it. Now, as you can imagine, I've now just increased the gain massively. Uh, well, I've increased the signal coming out. So I know that the signal coming into this plugin is correct because I've just set my gain with these. So I know that the signal coming into this, but if I've just done that, then the signal coming out of this plugin is gonna be higher than the signal that was coming into it. So that's why I then have a VU meter at the end of the chain as well. Not the last thing in the chain, but the second to last thing. So um, coming in, it's at 0 0.1. 
going out, it's clipping at 1.2, not clipping, it's peaking at 1.2. So you can see I've added one decibel of gain by doing my EQ in here. And I don't know, I might add some exciter on here as well. And I don't know, yeah, now we've pushed it up to 2.7. So we've added 2.7 worth of gain. So what I now need to do is adjust the output of this plugin. Unfortunately, most plugins have an output trim on them on this particular one. It's here. So I need to bring that down to minus 2.7, minus 2.8. It's near enough. So as you can see, I've brought it down to minus 2.8 and we're now back to zero. And if I, if I was doing this at a point in time where I had lots of plugins on here, I'd need to make sure that these ones were turned off because they'll be adding or subtracting gain all the way through. So now that I've set that one, and I now, I now know that the input coming into Neutron, the input is coming in at minus 18, and it's going out at minus 18. And now, so now I could make sure that the gain is right on, and let's let's put uh, sound toys decapitator, let's put decapitator on it. Do, do, do. Here we go. Let's just drag it up there. So I know that what's coming into here is correct. So I can now add some saturation to this. Now this one does automatically, as long as that's switched, adjust the output. But as you can see, I always, always switch it off because it never reduces the output enough. Because as you can see, it's still adding five decibels worth of gain. So if you click that switch and think, oh, it's fine, it will keep the signal chain correct all the way through. It doesn't. So I need to bring that down until that's peaking at one. Where are we at? Takes a couple of seconds just to correct itself. Minus 0 0.7, need to add a bit. Touch more, minus 0 0.2. My OCD wants me to get it smack on. All right, we're at 0 0.1. So that's pretty much near enough. So as you can see now, I know that the input and the output coming in and out of that are correct. And that's why you don't want to start doing this until you're really mixing down and getting everything spot on. Because if you mess around with this, you can guarantee when you come to mix down, you'll be like, hmm, there's a bit too much saturation on that. I need to adjust that, which then you've got to readjust and redo your gain staging. So, um, yeah, get it somewhere near and then fine tune it right at the end. So I now know that my input and output from Neutron is minus 18. My input and output from that is minus 18. Now, in terms of my overall mix and sound, it may be a case now, and it's very often the case, that that's too quiet, really. I mean, I can just turn my speakers up. But I kind of know that in order to get everything at the right kind of level, the way that it works for me is I set my kick at about minus six on here, six on here, and then work everything around that. And my overall uh, levels will be about right. And if needs be, I can just bring the gain down on the, on the master if, it's, if the whole thing is too hot. But I like to work on the basis that my kick's at six and then I fit everything around that. Uh, and I know I previously said don't pay any attention to that. I'm not saying it's at six decibels. I'm just saying at six on here normally works f for me as a guide. So I would then use the limiter that I've got right at the end of the chain. And all I'm using this limiter for is just, well, I've already got the gain quite high on that. But I just use that to bring the gain up to get well it's gone too high anyway um so let's bring that so that it's sitting at about six so all i'm doing with this is just trimming it now so rather than pulling that down or up i'll leave that where it is so that that sits at six there and i know that then if i get everything to fit around my kick like that then that'll be about the right level so that's what i used that for um that limiter just at the end of the chain just to then boost or 
cut, well not cut, but either increase or decrease the volume going to the master channel. Um, just for my own listening purposes more than anything. Um, if I had, but it gives you more control at mix down because if you do want to tweak anything, you can then just use these to tweak. But if I've got this, let's say I didn't use the limiter to do that, to get it roughly where I want it to be. And I just used the slider here. And let's say there might, there may well be certain cases where you have the slider all the way down there in order to get it at the right level, whatever it is. It might be a synth, it might be a hi-hat, whatever. And you end up with that right down there. And when I'm in the creative kind of process, I may have some of them down there. But when it comes to mixing down, the first thing I do is bring it go right, bring everything up to unity gain, up to zero, and adjust with the limiter the actual level that I want. Because as you can see on these numbers here, if I just stop that for a second, these aren't all equally spaced. Yeah, so as you can see, moving that slider from, the, so that's at three decibels there, or three, yeah, well, that's at three, and that's at six. So that much distance, that much travel up here is three decibels, yeah? But if you look at the numbers further down, as you can see, that's at what, 20, seven that's at 30 and they start getting closer and closer and closer together so all of a sudden moving that slider a fraction there is well it's not 10 decibels but it's four decibels you know three decibels down here is that much movement whereas up here it's that much movement so if you get all your levels roughly right then you've got much more fine control then to just tweak stuff because towards the end of the process all you're really doing is tweaking and it is half a decibel here half a decibel there and if you've got your slider down here then trying to do half a decibel is almost impossible so that's the way i did gain staging to start with now it's not how i do it anymore and i'm just going to show you the other way uh, or another way and the way that i do it now so i'm just going to open the snare um, because that's set up how how I do things. And I use Slate Digital's virtual console collection, and it is brilliant. And I bought this plugin before I then subscribed to the All Access Pass, which kind of means I shouldn't have really bothered buying this one. But uh, I don't mind, but it is fantastic. I do really like it, and it makes gain staging so much easier because I haven't got to have two VU meters, two limiters. I do still have the limiter right at the end just to control my overall volume going to the master channel. So I do still have that there, and that's because I've got these other plugins here in between the mix rack and the limiter. Now, sometimes I might not have those plugins there, and I might do everything within this. Um, but if I just press play on that now the snare is not hitting as often um as you can see vu meter here now i could just do my i could drop an eq there and then um do, 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 dynamic so then a compressor and as you can see they've all got the same kind of vu meter on them so the the beauty of using um so eq so harmonics might put some saturation on it the beauty with using this is you can see you gain staging all the way through, and then I might just use a, um, uh, 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 where is it there? There's a trimmer. So this is the same thing really as using the limiter to adjust my gain. I can then adjust my gain up and down here to get the level that I want. So using virtual mix rack is a brilliant way of doing your gain staging because it does make it easier to do it all the way through the process and i can just move that one to there so that i can see my level and make sure that whatever i've got on here so uh, what is it a snare so is there a snare on here not that it really matters for the purpose of what i'm doing uh is there a snare there we go modern bright snare so what's that done to the signal it's increased it by a decibel or so, a couple of decibels actually. Uh, so if I actually had that at zero, 
which it isn't currently. So let's just bring that to zero. Mm, it's not coming to zero. But anyway, I could then just trim that down and then move that to there and go, right, okay. What's that doing to the signal? Well, that's decreasing the signal massively. So I'll increase it. Um, so I'll increase it here until it gets to zero. Right, now I can just move that to there, do the next one. Um, and some of them will have the meters on them. So using virtual console collection or vi virtual mix rack that we've got here makes gain staging so much easier. But unfortunately, there's some plugins that I like that aren't part of um, virtual mix rack, stuff like Neutron and Reverb and whatever. So, um, but if you completely use this for all, which you could do, there's all the modules in here to do all your EQs, your dynamics, your saturation, your compression. So you could just do everything within this and it would make it a lot easier. Um, so that's another way of doing it and a simpler way. And I've got to say that this Slate Digital all access pass is well worth, is well worth the 10 quid a month or whatever it costs. The only other thing to just bear in mind is uh, some of these I'm using a synth for. So lead one, uh, lead two is Serum. So let's just open that up. Um, so Serum here is, as you can see, it's playing whatever it's playing here. Now we're fine here. But you'll find very often, I'm just trying to see if I can find a particular one that's going to do it. Very often you'll select a patch. Um, you can see that one's a lot hotter. And it will actually, if I just turn that up, very often you'll use a, you'll use a synth and you'll load a patch. And it, will, and it will be like that. It'll be clipping. And you might not notice that. And when you need to just be aware that if that's clipping like that, this synth will actually, it will actually, there's a good chance it will be distorting the sound within here. So rather than just doing what I've said and reduce the gain after the synth and reduce the gain on the channel, you need to just check that that's not clipping there. And if it is, you need to bring it down so that it's in an acceptable level here. Um, and then adjust your gain as you would do normally on each channel. But just make sure that none of your synths are clipping there. Um, what else have I got here? Uh, I've got Silent on here as well. What's this? Lead. Silent is lead three. Uh, so lead three I'm not is not playing at the minute. So let's just move that to there so that it's playing. So again, in Silent... You can see here that's as that's as loud as that wants to be and silent is one where lots and lots of the presets clip see if i switch to that one that's way too hot you would have to bring that down quite substantially by the looks of it there we go and then adjust adjust the gain to suit within the channel because that clip in there will will be affecting the sound coming out of it so you need to make sure you're not clipping within any of the uh, any of your actual synths or whatever it is you're using. Um, just make sure they're not clipping. So I hope that has helped with regards to gain staging. And it's one of them things that starts making more sense the more you do it. So start doing it. Because let's imagine if you're not gain staging at the minute. If you're not gain staging at the minute... You're going to be loading some samples that are 10 decibels too loud. And you're going to be loading some that are 10 decibels too quiet. And you're going to be using synth patches on Silent or Serum or Omnisphere or whatever it is that are way too hot or way too quiet and adjusting them here. And you're not going to be getting the best out of the synth or out of the plugins that you're then using to affect it. So... It's not something you're going to start doing and all of a sudden you're going to be like, oh, this sounds much better. But once you start doing it, it also just helps everything to make sense. Compression starts making more sense. Um, 
and all of your saturation and your other effects will start reacting how they're supposed to react. Um, and ultimately, everything will just start sounding better and having more control over your mixing down because everything's gain staged correctly will just help massively. And once you start doing it, it'll start making sense and you'll be like, ah, yeah, I wish I'd have started doing this sooner. Um, so I hope this video has helped. Um, if it has, leave a like, leave a comment. Um, and, uh, oh, before I go, the other reason you need to start paying attention to this. And one thing I will say is that I always on my master channel, always, always have a limiter on the master channel, the last thing on the master channel. And it's set, mm, well, that's currently set to minus 1.4 decibels. But it's normally set to, sorry, yeah, it's that's the gain. The ceiling is set to, well, minus 0.3. As long as it's set lower than zero, that's the main thing. Um, and the reason for that is that, you know, most people watching or a lot of people, you'll possibly have some reasonably expensive or certainly expensive to you, whether that's 50 pounds, that's probably expensive to you. And if they're 500 pounds, then that will be expensive to you. We've, you know, most of us have got the most expensive we can afford whatever that is but you're either going to be using uh headphones or monitor speakers to listen to your, to your music as you're creating and mixing and if you're not gain staging and you don't have a limiter on your master channel there's a very good chance that you're going to be sending signals that are way too hot way above zero decibels to either your headphones or your speakers. And whether your speakers cost £200 or £2,000, they're probably expensive to you and you wouldn't want them to get damaged. And whilst they might have limiters built into them, you don't want to be sending really hot signals to them because there's a good chance you're going to end up damaging them eventually. Um, so... That's another reason why gain staging is important, but as a backup, so make sure you gain stage, but also as a backup, have a limiter on your master channel so that you're not sending signals that are way too loud to your headphones or your speakers um, because you don't want to take the risk. Maybe the limiter doesn't work very well on your speakers and it's allowing some signal to get through and it's going to start damaging them and then it's going to start distorting the sound. So that's another reason for gain staging, but also have a limiter on your master channel just to protect your equipment. So, yeah, that's everything I've got to say on the subject. I hope this has helped. If it has, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, um, and I'll keep putting more content out there and hopefully it's helping people.